White supremacists held a rally in Pikeville. The National Day of Prayer was recognized throughout the region and it's Derby weekend and it's all coming up on This Week. Welcome everyone to This Week, I'm Sean Allen. For the next half hour, we'll catch you up on news you may have missed and give you updates on the week that was in your hometown. Of course, the story of the week was last weekend's rally at the city of Pikeville saw hundreds of white supremacists and counter-protesters come from out of town and turn Pikeville's Main Street into a tense situation for all involved. Barricades and a wall of law enforcement kept the opposing sides separate, but it did not keep them from spreading their messages. Prior to Saturday's event, EKB was invited to a banquet in Letcher County held by the National Socialist Movement and Traditionalist Worker Party, where they were very vocal about their beliefs. Any other group can advocate for their people. Like if this was a Black Pride event, none of those people would have any problem with it. They would have no problem whatsoever with us being out here up raising money for the people. If this was, say, a Black Lives Matter rally in Detroit and they were trying to help the poor there, the media would definitely have a different approach to it, you know. One person was arrested at the end of the demonstrations. Court documents show 35-year-old James Gibson of Route 194 West in Pike County had been previously yelling at police officers about the condition of their dogs when he allegedly told an officer in an apparent threat that he would see them around. Court documents show Gibson ignored commands to leave the area and yelled at other protesters in an attempt to get them to turn against police officers at the scene. Gibson was arrested and charged with disorderly conduct, menacing, and third-degree terroristic threatening. He was released from jail later Saturday night. To say that we were all on edge with Saturday's demonstrations in downtown Pikeville would probably be an understatement, but city officials and law enforcement prepared for the worst while hoping for the best. For two weeks, Pikeville city officials worked around the clock finalizing security plans of Saturday's rally and counter demonstration, and that planning involved several law enforcement agencies, as well as Homeland Security and the FBI. For every police officer or state trooper you saw on downtown streets, there was another perched atop a building or watching out of several windows nearby. And while that much protection came at a significant cost, officials say it was a justified use of taxpayer money. Our businesses, our citizens pay taxes uh, to ensure that property and life is protected. Um, and I don't think there was any better example of this weekend of, of why they're doing that for one and two to show that um, all forces that were here are working together. All 21 police officers that we have with uh, Pikeville Police Force was on scene standing side by side with all the sheriff's departments and uh, Fish and Wildlife and uh, and the state, you know, we had over 150 officers here. You know, the, uh, the unsung heroes in this too was the community, the university, and taking the action that they did. Uh, businesses closing down, people basically staying home and taking this serious. We did not force anybody to change their venue, to close down, but uh, we certainly 100% supported the, those businesses that elected to do so at great sacrifice. So I'm, I'm extremely proud of the outcome. Blackburn says the increased police presence throughout the city coupled with the lack of residents choosing to participate in the activities sent a very clear message. Coming up, we'll take you to ceremonies for the National Day of Prayer that were held Thursday across the region. But first, EKB Chief Meteorologist Nathan Hopkins will be in with a look back at the week and weather. That's coming up next on This Week. Hello, I'm Tony Dameron, Pikeville Medical Center's Chief Information Officer and Vice President of Information Systems. Join us as we celebrate National Hospital Week, May 7th through 13th. Our hospital continues to grow thanks to the dedication and hard work of our employees. Hello, I'm Dr. Mark Swafford. It's a blessing to work alongside such skilled and compassionate employees. Thanks for all you do and happy Hospital Week. You want to feel connected, at one with your world. Informed, included, and inspired. So no matter where you are, when important things happen, we're here at all hours, in the moment, 
on every screen in your life. Your local TV and radio broadcasters. We investigate and inform, give back to the community, build the local economy, even save lives. America's number one source for news, weather, and information. And unlike any other news source, we're here, 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 and here. We are broadcasters, always here for you, wherever here may be. Text TV to 52886. Tell Washington local stations matter. Do you know someone turning 75 or older? Or a couple about to celebrate a wedding anniversary of 50 years or more? Let us celebrate with you. Milestones and Memories will air during EKB TV Evening News at 6, Tuesdays and Thursdays. You can submit your picture and information to milestones at ekbtv.com. Milestones and Memories on EKB TV, brought to you by Thacker Memorial. Welcome back into This Week on EKB TV. I'm Chief Meteorologist Lathan Hopkins, and instead of looking back at just the past weekend weather, Let's take a look back at the past four weekends because it has been a roller coaster ride. April 14th and 15th, temperatures 84 on Saturday, 80 on Sunday. Then hillbilly days rolls around and look what happens. High temperatures drop into the 50s and we pick up more than an inch of rain. Last weekend, near record highs, both Saturday and Sunday, all the way to 88 degrees on Saturday. 86 on Sunday and now we're looking ahead to this weekend and it's going to be cool yet again down to 58 degrees on Saturday and forecast high of 60 on Sunday and yes we're even talking about the possibility of frost especially Sunday night into Monday that's when temperatures will fall in the low to mid 30s. Sean. <laughs> All right, thanks, Lathan. Religious and community leaders joined with members of the public in the Pikeville City Park at lunchtime Thursday to mark the National Day of Prayer. The event included prayers for the nation, the government and military, businesses and schools, and for churches and families. Participants also broke into small groups of prayer, and while the focus was on faith, there was also a feeling of relief at the gathering, following the controversial demonstrations in the city just a few days prior. Well, I think it's confirmation, that's what I say, uh, that there's even some police officers who have told me that obviously prayers were answered. Not only was or things organized well for the event last Saturday, but prayers were answered in the fact that it did not erupt into something much uh, more harmful. And so I, I think there's a spirit of thanksgiving for that here today, but also a reminder that we should be continuing to pray for our community. Pike County Judge Executive Bill Deskin signed an order proclaiming Thursday as the National Day of Prayer in Pike County. The theme for this year's observance was, For your great name's sake, hear us, forgive us, and heal us. Many observe the National Day of Prayer in the traditional way, but someone or some people observed it in a less conventional way in Prestonsburg. As businesses opened Thursday morning, dozens found prayers anonymously attached to their door that read, praying for all those who enter these doors. Thank you for serving our community. You are loved. A note that touched all who read it. I was blessed my socks off. We, we pull up, I'd had a rough morning, and this was on my door. I just started crying. It, it, it just truly, truly blessed me. So then as the day went on, we found out they were all over town. And what a blessing that our community would show so much love. People, Christ loves you, we love you, we've got to stick together. For more information on the National Day of Prayer, visit nationaldayofprayer.org. Coming up, it's known as the fastest two minutes in sports. We'll take you to the Derby festivities next. The first Michaela College will be in the sports on this week. Hi, I'm Michelle Hagee, Vice President and Chief Financial Officer at Pikeville Medical Center. As we celebrate National Hospital Week, we ask you to join us May 7th through the 13th to recognize our outstanding employees. I'm Dr. Kevin Pugh. Pikeville Medical Center's employees not only offer professional skills to patients, but provide them with compassion and understanding. Thank you for all that you do and happy Hospital Week. 
Attention small business owners. Penn Funding announces the easiest and fastest business funding program, the Platinum Business Account. We needed cash fast. Business is good, but this is an emergency. We needed some new equipment, and the banks wouldn't help us. At Penn Funding, we like to say yes. You're approved. With your Platinum Business Account, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more. This amazing new business account funding program is so effective, you could have the cash you need in just days. I called, spoke with an agent who pre-qualified us, and connected me. Call now for your Platinum Business Account. If you've been in business for at least six months, you could qualify for up to $50,000 or more in just days. I called Penn Funding and had my money fast. Need cash for your business? Call Penn Funding now. Call 800-706-9477. That's 800-706-9477. East Kentucky Broadcasting salutes our first responders and local officials for their handling of the recent demonstrations in Pikeville. When neo-Nazi white supremacists and anti-fascist outsiders arrived, they were met with a well-organized and executed plan. We allowed them to exercise their rights, but also ensured that no civil unrest or violence took place. We're proud to be headquartered in Pikeville, Kentucky. EKB, your truly local news source. It's been a busy week in sports this week as athletes made their decision to take their talents to the next level. The Pikeville baseball team is headed to the quarterfinals for the first time since 2010 in the All-A Classic. And the U-Pike baseball team is in Bowling Green for the first time since the new postseason format has been introduced. On Wednesday, Jenkins' Darian Sloan signed the dotted line to go to Grayson, Kentucky, where he will play football for Kentucky Christian. And then on Thursday, Prestonsburg, Zion Eccles will pick up a bat for Transylvania University in Lexington as he signed his commitment letter to become a pioneer. McGoffin County's Trenton Russell has decided to stay a little closer to home as he made his decision to play basketball at Alice Lloyd College in Pippa Passes. Congratulations, guys. The Pikeville Panthers have advanced to the quarterfinals in the state All-A Classic Tournament for the first time in seven years as they compete in Lexington this weekend for a chance to call themselves state All-A baseball champions. The seniors have been waiting for this moment for a long time as I caught up with them this week before they headed to Lexington. It's awesome. You know, it's the first time since 2010, I think so. And uh, it, it's been our goal for a while to win a region, not, not just this week, region, but the big region too. And to get it done my senior year, it's special. I just know that whenever I was younger, my brother, he was a senior and he did it in 2010. It just feels good being, going back, like as, having the memories when he was going and then now I'm here. So it's kind of like replacing what he did. It feels good. It's just been like a dream really since freshman year just to get here. And now that it's finally came true, it's a bit, it's, it feels really good. Yeah, it's a great opportunity. The last couple of years we came up short and it's just great to finally put it together and have a chance to go win state. It's our first state tournament, so it was pretty cool. Getting to go down there and play in Lexington on that uh, minor league field is just going to be a cool experience, I think. Just really forgetting what happened the past couple games and just having a brand new start and a brand new look out to how we approach each game. Those games were, you know, like coming off an emotional win against West Carter and you get up at 8 a.m. the next day. And it's just, you know, kind of difficult to transition after that. But, you know, we'll be excited to play at Whitaker Bank this weekend, hopefully win a few games, maybe win it all. Oh, I think we definitely have a shot. I think we just had a little bit of a slower, just like a little midweek kind of bug there. And now I think we'll be up and ready to play Saturday. I think we'll, we can win it all. More baseball news coming from the Mid-South Conference as the U-Pike Bears are down in Bowling Green competing for the MSC tournament title. But rain got in the way for the Bears as all games were pushed back on Friday to this weekend. We will have a complete wrap-up of both the Pikeville and University of Pikeville baseball team success this weekend on Monday's edition of the EKB Evening News at 6. And coaches, athletes, and families, don't forget to let us know here at EKB when you are taking your talents from high school to the next level. We would love to share it with everyone. Back to you, Sean. All right, thanks, Michaela. People from all over the world descend into Louisville, Kentucky for not only the Kentucky Derby, but for the festivities leading up to the race. EKB's own Jill Fraley Donson was one of those enjoying all the Derby has to offer. Right outside 
site of the Derby Gates, we have a lot of interesting things that you can do. One, you can park, you can get lunch going into the Derby, or you can even maybe catch a golf cart ride. My friend Rich here came all the way from the north. How many years have you been coming to the Derby? Uh, 1977 when Seattle slew one. So uh, you do the math. So you're, so you're pretty skilled at this, right? Unfortunately, every time I open my billfold at the downs, I lose. So I would say no in that well, regard. But the, but the effect is just absolutely adorable yeah. to come here. Now, you have parked in one of these lovely horseshoe neighborhood lawns that we have here. Talk to us about yeah, how Mr. easy it is to park. Mr. and Mrs. Tate, we've been parking with them for, I'd say, at least 12 years. And they're, they're lovely folks. And they, they listen, you get the valet service like you're in New York City. They park the car for you they, and it's ready when you're done and they're just absolutely adorable people and they've been here doing this for a long time now let yep. me tell you too if you're hungry before you go in our friend here has got some great barbecue nachos anything you need so you're able to get great parking just outside the gate pulled pork have you tried the pulled pork I, or the beef burgers last year i did but i told him this year he should be selling mittens and wool coats because i thought i woke up and i was in pittsburgh in february <laughs> You can see the yeah. fog as you blow your breath this exactly. morning, but I tell you, it's going to be a great day here at the Derby, and we're so excited. I love uh, the Commonwealth of Kentucky, and you folks are really, really hospitable, and God bless all of you. Well, we're happy to have you here. Thanks so much. Thank Best you. of luck at the track today. Thank you, and you guys too. All right, Chase, thanks, brother. Listen, if you need a great place to park, there are street, the lines are forever long with yards ready for you to park in for a small fee. And a lot of them do take reservations. If you need a snack going into the Derby, we've got that too. Or if you really don't want to walk, I have seen some golf carts in and around that will, will haul you over to the track to get you in the gate. So that's the story right now from outside the gates at the Derby. We'll send it back to you. There are so many things to see and do if you're a first timer at the Derby. We've caught up with some lovely ladies from Cajun Country who were at the Derby for the first time. What are some of the things you're hoping to see today? Oh, all kinds of excitement. I want to see the nice horses, uh, the pretty outfits, and lots of mint juleps. Lots of mint juleps and, of course, placing that all-important bet, correct? Oh, yeah, that's correct. I haven't made a bet yet. You haven't yet? And I was here yesterday, and I haven't spent one penny on a bet. So this was on a bucket list for you all to make sure you made it to the Derby and your yeah. sisters and a sister-in-law. Correct. Yes, this is a bucket list. I already have my bets picked out. Always dreaming is number one in my book. Very good. Well, you all look lovely today. Sorry that the rain came in, but Derby time is always a great time and you're going to have a lot of fun. All right. Best of luck to you all. So whether you are here from Louisiana, you need to make sure that you try out the juleps, place your bet, and as these ladies have said, the dress and the attire is always the most important thing that you get to do on Derby Day. We'll send it back to you. Time to place that all-important bet. If you come to the Derby, you probably have in mind who you're going to pick to win the big race today. But a lot of people go by the silks, they go by the numbers, they go by the track record of the horse. Our friends here are Derby veterans. They've been here before they've done this. Tell us how you pick your horse. Um, I pick the horse based on the color that it is. Uh -huh. So normally I like to pick the gray horses. The gray horses. What about the silks? No, I don't normally look yeah. at the silks. No, yeah. not as What about you? Uh, you know, so I kind of go with like a number name combo. I look at the track record, just kind of see what I'm feeling. You know, it's just, I, I more look at the track record. I mean, you know, whether sloppy, yeah. wet, you know, just kind of go from there. I had, a, had some luck with it last year, so I think I'm going to stick with it. So you're a little bit more intense. Now, it's my first time at the Derby. I've got to place my bet coming up a little bit. So what's the one thing that you would tell me that I need to make sure that I look at when picking my horse today? I would definitely say look at how it performed in previously, like he said, on sloppy tracks yeah. to see how it runs on the wet weather just because it's been raining. All right, we'll go with that and the color maybe of the silks today. Yeah. 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 Now that I have all of my tips, it's time to go place my bet. We'll send it back to you. Covering the Derby from Churchill Downs, Jill Fraley Dotson, EKB News. All right, thanks, Jill. Coming up, Shelby Steele will introduce us to an inspirational lady from Turkey Creek with Get to Know. Plus, this week's edition of Mountain Music. It's all coming up next on This Week. Hello, I'm Dr. Bill Harris, 
Medical Director of Cardiology at Pikeville Medical Center. Join us as we celebrate National Hospital Week, May the 7th through the 13th. We appreciate the nearly 3,300 employees who dedicate their lives to serving others. Hi, I'm Dr. Cody Reynolds. Everyone plays an important role in taking care of our patients at Pikeville Medical Center, from maintenance to housekeeping and nursing and beyond. Happy Hospital Week. By 2020, 56% of Kentucky jobs will require either a college certificate or a college degree. But only one in four public college students will graduate on time, and many may not finish at all. You can put the odds in your favor. Just earn 15 credits each semester, or 30 a year, to finish on time, and save money on tuition. Talk to your advisor and make a plan. Kentucky's colleges and universities agree. Take 15 to finish on time. Get in, get out, get going. Hi, Kathy Mitchell here with my new red copper cookware. The revolutionary pan made with non-stick ceramic and super strong copper. Guaranteed to stay scratch free forever. It's lightweight yet super strong so it won't scratch, peel or chip into your food. Red copper is a baking pan with a handle. It goes into the oven up to 500 degrees and everything slides right out. Cook my healthy crispy chicken fingers with little or no fat or oil. Chop steak and onion for a melty Philly cheesesteak. Absolutely no sticking. Or whisk eggs without a mixing bowl, truly a time saver. Call now and receive my 10 inch red copper pan for just $19.99. Plus get my recipe book free. Call now and you can double the offer and receive a second set. Plus our new forever sharp copper knife. Just pay a separate fee. Razor sharp and food slides right off. An incredible value. Call now. Call 1-800-426-0848 to get your special offer red copper pan. Call now or go to redcopperpan.com. So call 1-800-426-0848. Call now. There's a musical tradition here unlike anywhere else in America. During this week, we shine a light on part of that musical tradition. So now sit back, relax, and enjoy our mountain music. It's time now for Mountain Music, being brought to you by the Mountain Arts Center, the main stage of the country music highway. Moving from Elliott County to Huntington has caused Zach to cling even harder to his mountain roots. In a way, it's like the further you get, the more you cling to your roots. And so the more I push myself to bring out, you know, like this is who I am. And when I write songs, those things come out more, I think. Keeping my material and my songs about my life and my family and the things that I grew up with as a way to say, hey Huntington, this is who I am. Sometimes good old country living is the best inspiration for a good song. The song is Small Town Feeling that I wrote about living in Elliott County. That's what I wrote it about. I just wanted to write like a simple feel good song and I just, but everything that is in that song is something that I lived. The good times and the moonshine, all that stuff that's just real life.
Each of us goes through challenges in life. Sometimes those problems seem like more than we can bear until we find support from those around us and sometimes from unexpected places. That's the experience of the latest subject of our Get to Know series. Tonight, we get to know Faye Klein. Get to Know is brought to you by Dr. Tiffany Todd Duncan, DMD, located on Mall Road in South Williamson. 86-year-old Faye Klein has faced many obstacles in her life. In 1992, she had breast cancer. Just last year, she had ovarian cancer and now lung cancer. Cancer runs in our family. Faye says when she found out about the ovarian cancer, it was a huge shock. Well, I didn't have no symptoms or anything, so in September I had to have a, had had surgery and it was in fourth stage. And I took six chemo treatments and five radiation treatments. Once the treatments were over, Faye thought she was finished with cancer. However, she then learned it had moved to her lungs. I don't know how much longer. They want me to take some more chemo, but I don't think I'm going to take any more. I said, time you hit 86, everything started happening to me. <laughs> but, you know, I've not give up yet. Until the good Lord says it's time, then I'll go. As Faye continues her fight against cancer, the community and even some strangers have rallied around her to show her support and love. I guess I've got about 50 cards in all. Cards have been mailed from as far away as Colorado in support of Faye. Schools, sororities, neighbors, and friends have all come together. I appreciate, you know, every one of them. So, and the thoughtfulness, you know, of the people, you know, that's around. If you would like to send Faye a card for support, you can do so by using the address listed on your screen. Reporting in Turkey Creek, I'm Shelby Still for EKB News. Coming up next, we'll fill you in on a few happenings in your area as we take a look at the week ahead. Stay with us. We'll be right back on this week. Hello, my name is Cheryl Hickman. I'm Vice President, Assistant to the President and CEO at Pikeville Medical Center. Join us as we celebrate National Hospital Week, May 7th through the 13th. With the commitment and hard work of our employees, we have grown from a small local hospital to a regional referral center. Hi, I'm Dr. Judson Mel. I want to thank all of our PMC employees for always putting our patients first. Happy Hospital Week. Mother's Day is May 14th, and EKB TV is celebrating moms in a big way. Celebrate with us by entering our Mom and Me Selfie Contest. Post your best Mom and Me Selfie to the EKB TV Facebook page. One lucky mom will win a night out with her whole family, starting with dinner at the Landmark and ending with a movie at the Riverfield 10 in Pikeville. We know moms love to spend time with the family. All entries must be submitted by Friday, May 12th at noon. Go to the EKB TV Facebook page and enter now. Here are some events in your area that you may be interested in. The 2017 William G. Duke Golf Scramble will be held Thursday, May the 11th, beginning at 8 a.m. at Stonecrest Golf Course. Proceeds from the scramble go to benefit the Big Sandy College Educational Foundation. And runners, mark your calendars for the third annual Awesome 80s Glow Run 5K. That will take place on Saturday, May 13th. Registration begins at 6.30 with the run kicking off at 8 p.m. at U.S. Bank in Prestonsburg. I hope you enjoyed our look back at some of the stories that made headlines this week. Be sure to tune in next weekend at 6 p.m. right here on EKB-TV. For this week, I'm Sean Allen. Have a great weekend.